Java Balls! Alright, on the rest of the armor, I'm going to do a little non-metallic action. I hope. I've got this gray. This is a Iron Hull gray. Um, Privateer Press Iron Hull gray. And I'm going to paint uh, the rest of the model more or less with this. All the metallic parts with Iron Hull gray. Now this stuff, it actually covers very nice, like a foundation paint almost from the old GW line. This Iron Hall Gray. Actually, it looks pretty nice next to that red too. It's a nice base color. I'm not done the red yet. I need to go and give it another touch. I'm just... uh getting this gray in now while the red dries. As you paint, <laughs> I, I missed a little f bit of flashing there, a little flashing nub. I tried to knock it off with my brush, but failed. There we go. Just snip that off with the knife. Now I'm being pretty liberal with this. I'm just kind of coating it all. His hands, his anything that's not red on this is going to be given this this treatment. So all of the under armor here.
This is actually a really nice base coat. I hope so because I just bought two pots of it by accident. Oh, I found another little nub. I think it looks nice. I might have just found my new gray base coat color instead of uh, Citadel. So you go ahead and work on that, and uh, I'm going to come back in a few minutes after I've finished this myself. Uh, Iron Hull Gray P3 paint on all of the other metallic parts that are not red armor. And uh, you get the little rings, and, and you'll see. You'll see. Back in a bit. This is my first time really painting one of these models. Um... I've used some of these P3 colors before on G-Dub models, and, uh, but I've never painted, you know, I've painted metal Terminators, but this is, uh, I mean, metal um, Dreadnoughts, Games Workshop, but I've never painted such a dense, heavy metal model like this. It's, it's, it's really small compared to a Dreadnought. But it's so heavy, <laughs> it like taxes my fingers to be able to paint it. It's amazing. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get the gray parts. So once again, I'm using Iron Hall Gray to get all of the parts that are going to be metallic looking. I'm going to do a little non-metallic metal for you. The Jawa way. You know, there's I'm sure a dozen Golden Demon winners out there that are going to say that's not non-metallic metal. But whatever, it's easy, it's quick, and it works for me. Let me take that back. Nothing is quick on this model. I do got to say that um, uh, I highly suggest giving your privateer press metal models a thorough washing because um i don't know if it's uh, a mold release that they use on their models but it some of the uh the black spray primer is flecking off much more unusual than i normally see on a in a model pretty much any any edges that have black on it if you touch them it flecks off 
the black primer. So I'm assuming they use some kind of mold release, which is a compound they spray on the, in the mold before they inject it with uh, the metal so that the model pops out easily. If you're looking intently, you'll notice that I forgot to uh, put the back part of his little sash on. That's okay. When I assemble Terminators, I rarely put their little uh, cod pieces on. So it's my hope that this gray acts as a second primer and dries with a good solid coat in order to combat that flaking. Oh, and look right here. Uh, the model had like a, it was uh, not properly cast. So there's like broken apart edges. It looked like he rested his whole arm in acid. Um, it's not terrible, but... Uh, I'm actually going to, when I get to that part, paint a little battle damage there. While I've got you here, I'm going to go ahead and do the brown. I don't think I bought a... Uh... P3 brown. Let's see what I have. We've got green. Have another pot of iron hull gray. Makes me so mad. Rucksack tan. For the brown, I'm actually going to go dark. Dark first. We're going with uh, Morn Fang Brown Citadel paint. I'm gonna paint all of his little satchels here. Interesting, Morn Fang Brown. My previous brown favorite base was Bestial Brown. For GW and it was very very opaque it, it covered very well over black first uh, impression of this Mornfane Brown is that it does not cover so well he's got a big brown satchel on his chest here Looks like there's like a shotgun shells across the front. I'm also going to paint this. I know it's probably metallic, but I'm going to paint it brown anyway. He's got some brown pouches around his belt straps here. We'll go ahead and give them the brown love. There are some metal rings on them. I'll touch up with gray later. So probably at least an hour spent on him so far just on base coating. Getting all the base coats done. 
Not to mention the hour I spent holding them together while he dried with glue. I did not pin this model. I just glued it with a uh, some Loctite gel super glue. Check his backside to make sure there's no brown back there. Just the back of his sash. Oh, I have access to the other side of his mini satchels there on his belt strap. Those things on his shoulders look like they're boxes of some sort. I might actually come back and nail those little boxes with uh, brown later on. All right, so now I'm gonna let this model rest and breathe and dry. Before I do that, I'm gonna go through and once again with uh, Iron Hall Gray, touch up all the little chips that have uh, happened since I started painting gray. I will paint his shotgun shells. You know, I think I'm going to paint his little belt, this part, with uh, this gray as well, up in here. Just throw in some variety, more variety, some more edging with the, to differentiate between the red and the gray. On the picture, this part is gray as well, but I'm gonna leave that red. It's good to use a picture as a guide, but don't be afraid to deviate away from what is painted on the picture. And by picture, I mean the picture online of the, of the dude on the store. All right, well, there he is. Okay, so I'm gonna let him uh, completely and totally dry. Acrylic dries in about 10 minutes, but takes about a day for it to really set and become, you know, solid. So to get to get the best use out of it, um, let it dry for at least a day before you really ha handle it. Okay, so that's it for base coating. Next time, we do a little bit of shading. More to come.